Um, AI, artificial intelligence, refers to the development of computer systems that can perform tasks uh, typically requiring human intelligence. They could include learning, reasoning, problem solving, perception, language, understanding, and, and even decision making. Uh, AI systems use algorithms and a vast amounts of data to recognize patterns and make predictions um, and or decisions, depending on what it is that you um, that you ask. Um, today, I wanted to talk about, obviously, uh, AI and HR, how those things kind of go hand in hand, the benefits of using AI for HR questions, um, limitations and considerations, and then also uh, best practices. Um, Using AI to answer HR questions can be fast and effective, uh, but it also comes with certain limitations and uh, considerations. So um, besides the obvious, um, here are a few that I wanted to kind of dig into um, one by one here. Uh, lack of human judgment, uh, bias and fairness, contextual understanding, privacy and confidentiality, uh, adaptability and learning, dependence on quality data, a trust and acceptance, uh, and most importantly, in my opinion, the regulatory and ethical considerations. So if you, um, you know, think about a, a situation that might come up, okay, right off the bat, you know, and I'm not sure how many of you have used uh, uh, AI in the past, and, and I've kind of, you know, dabbled in some of these um, features and dashboards, but the problem that you're going to run into uh, that I see most commonly is that these issues when it comes to employees or just the, the law in general are very specific depending on where you are geographically first, okay? A lot of the times people make mistakes, you know, they say, hey, you know, um, I'm in California and I have an employee that um, showed up late to work today. Can I terminate employment? Okay. Well, it's not, you know, it might give you an answer. Yeah, you know what? Showing up late to work is usually a good reason for you to, you know, terminate employment. Well, what it's not, it's not getting at or it's not asking is what are the circumstances? Why, why was the employee late to work? How many other times has it happened previously? Maybe the employee had a protected reason for not showing up to work. So there's a lot of analysis and a lot of, of um, contextual understanding that's missing, you know, and you might get terrible advice. You know, you might, you know, some people ask, for, you know, policies. Hey, I need a, um, a policy for, um, you know, clocking in and clocking out. I need to know about, you know, um, overtime. Well, if you're not very specific as to where you are located, it might give you federal rules instead of, instead of the, the California law. Um, and, I, and I tell you this because already it's, it's happened. I, we had somebody who made a mistake. Hey, you know what? I, just, I got a law. You know, I just got served a lawsuit. You know, I'm, I'm using another payroll company and, and I, I don't have enough money. I can't afford HR. So I was using chat GPT and I tried to put myself through this situation and you know, I, you know, employee, um, you know, uh, had some attendance issues. So I, I asked and, and it said that I could terminate. And I'm like, well, no, you know, you really, you can't do that because, you know, the, the issues, right. It looks like this employee that you terminated, right. Had an, had an issue that was protected, you know, had a, a sick family member that would be protected by California law. And, and we needed to go through the interactive process instead of just you know, jumping straight to termination. So um, that's one example. You know, obviously the lack of human judgment, the AI struggles to handle um, complex and nuanced situations that require uh, human uh, judgment and emotional intelligence. Um, you know, resolving interpersonal conflicts or providing um, support during you know, personal crises are tasks best suited for humans. That's, that's the exact example that I just gave you, right? If, if an employee is not showing up to work, we have the burden as the employer to ask why, right? And, and this is another situation too, um, job abandonment. I, mean, I could see this happening to where like, oh, our handbook says, you know, if you show, if, 
it's three days, three consecutive days that you don't show up to work, then we're going to let you go. That doesn't work in California. It, it works in Arizona. I would probably work in Texas. Uh, but in California, that would not because we have the obligation as the employer to reach out to the employee and go through the interactive process to figure out why aren't they showing up? You know, is it because they just don't want to work here and they're, you know, they're, they're not engaged, they're hung over they're who knows? I've had people in jail, you know, um, why aren't they here? And, you know, if the reason is not satisfactory, then of course we can proceed with termination. But if it's something that could be protected, then we have to kind of stop right there and go through this process to figure out how to handle it without, you know, creating legal exposure. Uh, it all, yeah, it also lacks the ability to understand and empathize with the human emotions, which is crucial for addressing uh, sensitive HR issues and providing uh, a supportive environment. You know, a lot of the times, you know, we want to get into a situation where we are coaching and or training our employees, right? It's, we spend a lot of time, um, you know, recruiting, you know, uh, dating, if you will, these employees, trying to convince them to, to join our company. And some of these situations that arise, you know, we need to be able to jump in and, and kind of talk through and, and figure out, you know, if a mistake was made, okay, is this still the right person for the job? And how do we, you know, educate them and, and coach and train so that we can move past these issues and not just, you know, look to fire them at, a, at every, um, or even, right, it doesn't have to be a termination. It can be some type of disciplinary action um, as well. Bias and, and fairness, I think um, this is another situation um, especially when we're talking about compensation, a lot of people ask AI. Um, that's another thing that, you know, when I'm talking to our clients and at some of these other um, seminars and, and gatherings that I've been to, a lot of people are, you know, because of the law now, uh, both in the state of California and on the federal level, we have this fair pay uh, legislation where we have to make sure that our employees are being paid the same depending on the work that they perform, you know, uh, under our roof. A lot of people kind of take that and they say, okay, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, you know, chat GPT and, and I'm going to see if I can get a pay scale, you know, but what's, you know, I'm in the um, payroll business, you know, ADP is one of my competitors. Hey, chat GPT, you know, do you have any, you know, compensation information, uh, you know, for ADP employees? You know, and I'm going to see what kind of information that they give it back. But again, you know, we don't necessarily know where they're, where that is that data coming from? Is it coming from California? Is it coming from a different state? You know, um, is it coming, you know, from, from global resources because they are global in some, in some departments and we are not. So it, it's just way too many things uh, that can go wrong and you're not going to end up getting the information that you really need or that you thought you were getting. Right. That sensitive compensation information is, is things that uh, are, are is data that a lot of um, companies do have, but that they charge for. So I've seen that. Well, you know, I don't want to go on to roberthalf.com and I don't want to pay for the salary guide. So I just, you know, tried AI to see if I could pull it up. No, I mean, there's not going to be a substitute for actually paying for the, the, the correct data that was mined that's for your specific situation. Um, contextual understanding, right? A AI may lack the contextual understanding necessary for certain decisions. Um, you know, company culture, uh, employee morale, individual circumstances. That's another thing. You know, I, I get questions a, a lot. Um, you know, you might have an employee that is struggling, but is a great teammate. The work product itself, you know, might be missing. They might just need a little coaching. You know, I've I've had a, a client here recently, um, here in, in Southern California, um, had this situation. There was an employee who just, you know, kept making a lot of mistakes. You know, minor errors, you know, small small errors, but they were adding up. And you know, our client just 
was were just fed up. Like, look, you know, I'm, I just can't take it anymore. These mistakes, they reflect poorly on me. Um, I need to, I need to terminate this employee, you know? And then they went to um, the manager and said, Hey, you know what? We're going to, we're going to let go of Dina on Friday. And the manager said, absolutely not. You know, if you let go of Dina, then I quit. You know, Dina's, you know, um, you know, she's a great employee, you know, yeah, she makes a few mistakes, but nobody, nobody's more well-liked, you know, here in the company and in, in our department, um, nobody works harder. Um, we can coach and we can train this person. But I'm telling you right now that if we if we terminate that, you're going to have a huge problem, you know, because you're going to have three or four people that are going to leave uh, because this is their favorite teammate. So things of that nature, you know, understanding the company culture um, and the individual circumstances, you're not going to get that. If you just say, hey, you know, hey, chat GPT, you know, uh, I have an employee that, you know, keeps damaging property and is costing me money. Can I can I let that person go? Portion say, well, yeah, that seems probably like a re, you know, a, a good justification, but you're you're lacking the the human side of things, right? The actual HR decision that needs to be made. Um, privacy and confidentiality. This is a big one. Uh, not a lot of people kind of think uh, think about um, handling a sensitive employee data through AI raises concerns about the security and the privacy. Uh, you need to be very careful of what you share um, within these systems because you don't know, I don't know, where these queries are going, where where this stuff is stored, who has access, access to it, and what type of protection of, of employee data. Um, so, you know, a situation that comes to mind is when you, you know, I, I've had somebody ask me, hey, you know what, um, I took two resumes, you know, I, I was having a tough time, you know, um, you know, deciding between which candidate I should hire. So I asked the, you know, I asked the AI to see if they could help me, you know, figure out which candidate might be best. And I'm like, what, you, how, how does, that doesn't make any sense to me is that you would, you would do something like that or sharing, um, you know, uh, compensation information. Hey, here are my employees. Here, here's our compensation structure. Is this aligned with um, other companies, right? So I would just be very, very careful whether it's, you know, things, you know, on behalf of your employees uh, or even personally, be careful what type of uh, data that you share um, into these search engines because, you know, they're still kind of, kind of new. Um, I keep hearing about a lot of security issues and privacy issues. I would just want to make sure that if we are going to use this for some basic information that, you know, we keep things general and we use it as like a, a framework. Um, so, for example, how, how does Brett use AI um, for HR? Well, not on specific situations. No, absolutely not. So what I might do is, um, let's say I'm going to go into an audit. Um, and I'm going to sit down with a restaurant, okay? I might just ask, you know, uh, AI, you know, what, as a California restaurant owner, what are some pain points that I might be facing? And what are some issues, uh, especially with regards to employees? Just period, ask. And just see, what is it that they, that they return to me, right? Just so when I go into that audit, I might have some things. Hey, you know what, Brett? It seems like, you know, um, re the reporting of tips, um, you know, how tips are being calculated, how they're being reported, how they're being taxed. You know, it looks like that's the million dollar question is tips. Okay, great. So then with that info, before I step into that audit, maybe I can research the law in California, you know, on tips. I can pull up some sample policies and I can be better prepared for that meeting, right? What I'm not saying is, Hey, chat GPT, um, my client needs a tip policy. Can you draft a policy for me? Because I don't want to spend the time and effort and, and energy um, in trying to draft one and making sure that it's correct. No, I'm not doing that. Right? Uh, I'm just trying to get a, a pretty general understanding as to what, you know, this industry or that industry or this location, you know, um, might be dealing with right now that I might not be aware of so I can be better prepared to walk into the meeting. Um, adaptability and learning. Um, 
AI systems can be slow to adapt to these fast changes, right? They need the updates and training to learn new skills, right? Especially as these law changes, right? Minimum wage continues to change. California sick pay continues to change. There are a lot of uh, moving pieces. I think a good um, example would be, you know, with some of the, the most recent Senate bills, right? When we're talking about workplace violence prevention plans, if I go in there and say, hey, um, hey, chat GPT, what do you know about California Senate bill, you know, 553, you know? Um, if I do that the day that the law is, you know, published, it's not going to have any information. It might give me something wrong. It might give me a different state to say, well, we don't have anything on California because that's new. It might just tell me, oh, yeah, Senate Bill 553. Um, and it might give me the Arizona law, right? Because that's the that's the most popular thing. That's the one that most people have asked about because it hasn't had a chance to really update. So I might not know any better. And I'm like, okay, great. And now I'm pulling all this information, you know, um, that's, that doesn't even apply to California. So you have to, to be very careful and make sure that, you know, you are double checking, triple checking the output before you use anything to be able to help you with the, the project that you're actually working on. Um, the quality of, of the data, right? The effectiveness depends on the quality and quantity. Um, you know, poor quality data can lead to inaccurate or misleading results. That's a perfect example, like in that um, pay scale question, right? If, if, if it doesn't have any info, if it's only getting you, you know, sourcing data from, from one place, that's not really reliable. That's not what you're asking for, right? It's not the same as a, you know, a, a Google search or paying a professional company that actually did the homework and, and went through hundreds of different companies to help you determine what salary ranges are in your area you know, for the type of position that you're looking to fill. Um, most cases, not so I would say not necessarily some cases, most cases, um, sufficient data may not be available. Uh, especially when we're talking about AI. There are a lot of things that we can use AI for. You know, I'm, I've, I've heard a lot about it and from other clients and in different industries that people are um, relying on this heavily and it's really doing a great job for them. That's, that's great. But, you know, the purpose of this webinar today is just to remind you that when it comes to dealing with, you know, your business and employment practices and individual employee issues, um, it is not anywhere close to being reliable or uh, advisable to be using these um, search engines to get information on people or, or how to manage people. It's just not there yet. It does not have enough sources and enough um, uh, of the nuance behind it to be able to help you deal through the different, you know, situations depending on where you're located and, and what type of question that you have. Yet, yeah, you know, maybe this time next year, we're talking about something else. Maybe it's like, holy smokes, guys, in the last year, it's it's done so many good things and we can certainly now lean on it um, to help ourselves, um, you know, be, be more efficient when it comes to the AI and, and managing our day-to-day -day operation. Um, trust and acceptance. Um, yeah, building trust in a system is is essential. You know, I've used two or three of them. Um, you know, over the past few months, and yeah, they all have different. You know, there are different pros and cons. It's hard. I, I haven't quite found one yet that I would would trust and rely on. I think certain you know engines have um, you know different strong suits. Um, but I, I think as HR professionals, we must be skeptical um, at this time just due to the, the limitations because it's, it's kind of still evolving. Uh, lastly, when it comes to the, the, uh, the, the particulars, um, there are so many changes coming with the labor laws and state and federal regulations. Um, the ethical standards need, you know, can be challenging and it will require ongoing oversight. So I've already seen it happen in the last 90 days. I've already seen somebody 
you know, go in here, like I told you, um, you know, a, a brand new business, to like, you know, hey, I put all my eggs and, and you know, I, and, and emptied my savings trying to open this business and get everything going and pay my rent. And I can't afford HR. So I thought I could just use chat GPT, right? It's, it's just not, not there. It's not a good idea. Um, hiring decisions. Yeah. You know, I think I want to, you know, Dina does a lot of the front end hiring uh, for us here at SDP. So I'm glad that she joined us today. I wanted her to, um, touch on some of this because there are some things that kind of came across her her plate especially in the hiring um, realm and I wanted her to take a second to to share with us Dina you want to chime in yes thank you so much Brett and gosh Gina this is really um, a wonderful topic to cover for uh, human resources professionals or anybody who's on the hiring side of the organization. Uh, AI is only as smart uh, as the computer or data tells it to be. And so there's a lot of times when if you're going through a pool of candidates, if you've, uh, let's say you've, you've created a job posting and you've put it on a job board and, and you get um, so many candidates, you, you don't really even know where to start. Some of these job boards have an AI algorithm built into it that will push certain candidates uh, to the top of the hiring pool. Um, and that may not necessarily be the best candidate for the job. Uh, it could be uh, surfacing folks that uh, maybe have a higher education, but they have no relevant experience versus someone who may have 20 years of experience, but maybe lacks that master's degree, for example, or um, other uh, qualifiers that AI deems to be more important than job skills, such as um, hitting DEI ratios or uh, really kind of managing that diversity in the workplace. These things are all good and they are important. However, I wouldn't trust AI to help you make hiring decisions based on any of those criteria that it may source for you. So if you're using um, a job board like Indeed, for example, or Glassdoor, Career Builder, Monster, whatever you're using, uh, just know that sometimes those candidates don't necessarily just get sorted in um, the order that maybe you would choose. Uh, there are filters that you can set uh, what I do for us um, at Southland Data Processing is I have our filters uh, for recruitment um, based on chronological application. I am still looking at every single applicant. I'm not trusting AI to advise me on who I should look at first and foremost. And I would encourage you to do the same. I know it still takes a little bit more time to sift through those applications but um, the hiring market is a difficult one and there's lots of laws and regulations that we still need to adhere to and processes that we need to adhere to when we are interviewing folks and so just be aware that um, job boards are using ai uh, technologies to um, push certain candidates ahead of others thank you brett yeah thank you for taking a second to, to jump in on that. I know that's something that you and I have talked about on offline um, and uh, another area that's becoming more and more popular of people trying to reach out to use AI because they feel that it's gonna save time. I think, um, you know, the time, time savings is uh, attractive, right? A lot of things we do is like, hey man, I'm, I'm only one person here. I'm managing this whole, you know, department, this whole company by myself, I can't do it all. I need to be able to figure out how to leverage technology. Um, and I understand that, but it's, it's not, it, it cannot be used for everything, right? Benefits, efficiency, right? Can be quickly, these, these answers are very quick and they're very, very, you know, um, uh, thorough. They're not giving you one word answers. That's, it's, it, it appears to be you know, very well thought out, um, you know, detailed responses, depending on the question that you pose. Um, and you'll always go, you're always getting an answer, right? But is it the right one? Is it consistent? 
were we were we very clear enough with the initial ask to make sure that we were consistent enough to to receive the right answer um the availability you know it's 24 7 this is great you know i don't have time to tackle all this stuff right now i gotta do it at, at 10 o'clock tonight right after my kids are in bed i that's the only time i have you know when it's quiet to be able to do some work um, this is great because I can just start sending queries in here to you know to to AI and get a lot of information. Um, again, it's it's available, it's attractive. We just have to be very careful with how we are are phrasing the requests and how much stock we put into what they send us back. Um, yeah, and, and some of these systems are very very good. You know, are very cool with with some of the analysis and patterns and trends. Um, and the, the way that they're able to give you this information, it's, it's impressive. Uh, but in my experience, it's just not, it's not accurate. Um, it's, it's absolutely not going to be suitable for, you know, anything that's complex or sensitive, um, you know, period. And, and I think we talked about that already. So I, I think if this is something maybe new to you and you haven't tried it, I would try it absolutely try it but just please keep in mind to keep your the, the, the searches um and we'll talk about you know some of these limitations here um keep the searches very basic and just you know general and then try to figure out like okay you know i'm looking to hire um let's say hey you know what do i need to know about hiring a customer service representative in los angeles county and just get some basic info and and, and I think if you use it that way to be able to, you know, give you some things to kind of consider, um, you know, what are, you know, what are customer service candidates most interested in? You know, it's like, oh, they want benefits. They need health insurance. They need, it's most important, what kind of time off that they, you know, that they have. Okay. Well, then we can take that and say, hey, Brett, you know what? I was doing a quick search and it looks like, you know, for this position uh, that I'm hiring for and I'm growing this, I'm growing our customer service department, it looks like, you know, time off is important. I don't have a time off policy. Can we uh, set up a meeting so that you can, you can help draft us um, a California uh, compliant um, time off policy, please? Sure. Right, that would be something that where I, I think you can certainly use it. You're not asking AI to 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 draft the policy for you, but you just sourced a few you know a few things, and you were able to to figure out that time off is important to the the, the current candidate pool uh, for the position that you're hiring. You know, and then you reached out to the HR professionals to actually have them draft the policy for you. Perfect. Um, yeah, we talked about the bias, you know, uh, fairness. Um, it depends on where it's pulling the data from, which source, and you know the 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 queries that were posed previously. So you we have no idea um, what other people are asking, and uh, you know when we're talking about hiring decisions, compensation, you know, disciplinary actions, etc., things to where you know, fairness and equity are crucial. Um, there's no substitute for uh, having the HR professional that can jump in and actually talk you through all of the pros and cons to help you arrive uh, at the correct decision. Many HR issues benefit from, you know, obviously empathy, understanding, and the, the personal touch. Um, we talked about that as well. Uh, making sure that, you know, you have the information and then also making sure that you're, you are learning, right? And I know that, you know, especially those of you on, on our, our meeting today, uh, but for most of our clients, right? The most important thing is having the conversation once so that you understand why, okay? Brett, you know, this is what we are looking to, to do, you know, um, we need to we need to terminate Laura, right? We have a problem with Laura. We need to let her go. And I talk you through it, and I say, well, let's look at this. Let's look at all the paperwork. Let's look at the personnel file. Let's look at the the documentation, and we determine that yeah, it's probably the timing's not right. Well, why is the timing not right? Well, here's why, right? 
it looks like Laura, you know, um, still has, you know, sick pay available. So, you know, it would be a different story had this person, you know, on June 18th already exhausted all of their accruals for the year, you know, in, in less than six months, this person's already out of, you know, out of gas, you know, so to speak, and has a, you know, a, an exorbitant amount of, um, you know, attendance issues, right? That's a little bit different than somebody who maybe it happened once or happened twice and still has, you know, 24, you know, 32 hours of sick pay available. We have to go down and, and, and go through this order of operations to arrive at the right conclusion. And then you'll learn that, you know, I'll help you. I'll help, you know, teach you how to analyze these situations next time so that way when it comes up again it's you're like all right i remember this is how brett goes through it here's how i need to tackle this stuff and i'm actually you know making sure i'm applying the correct rules um, in accordance with my handbook you know and our company policies and then i can arrive um, at the right decision um yeah privacy uh, again you know um, i think it's very risky uh, to give them anything, any personal data. I don't ever do that. I don't ever even say what company I'm with, who, what my name is. I'm always just speaking in, in very general terms and, and trying to get, you know, a, a broad data, just some, some a basic overview to get me somewhere in the ballpark so that I can then, you know, do a more pointed search myself to figure out what it is I'm looking for. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think using it for the routine inquiries and the preliminary data, like we had talked about, absolutely. Um, and then once you get, you know, somewhere close, then you reach out and you, you know, you can lean on us to be able to get the exact information and the, the, the precise answer that you need. And, and then also the, the, um, the guarantee, if you will, right? We are HR professionals, right? We're insured. This is what we do every day. Right. If if you call Brett and Brett gives you the wrong the wrong answer, uh, it's not going to happen, by the way. Uh, but if it did, then you're protected. Right. Well, Brett gave me the wrong answer. And now we have this issue. Well, guess who's guess who's on the hook then? Brett is because he's the one that gave you the wrong answer. If you're on, you know, you're on AI trying to get all this information yourself and you make a mistake. You know, there's nobody that's there shouldering you know, some of that liability for you. Um, verify that, you know, that your data is, is updated. Make sure that the system that you're using um, is updated with all of the current compliance standards and regulations, right? You know, uh, recognize that, you know, um, at some, some locations in California, the minimum wage is going to change again in two weeks. You know, on, on July 1st, we're going to have updates again. So, we need to make sure that we're, you know, not getting last year's information because that's all that's available. And then we're mistakenly now paying all of our people the wrong rate. Um, yeah, continue to kind of go in there and, and evaluate um, what is it that I'm getting back? Does this make sense? Does this sound correct? You know, when I, when I looked in other avenues, is, is this kind of mirror what I'm getting in other engines? Or is this just kind of way off? Because if it's something unique, the chances are is that you know it, it's missed something. Your initial search was not detailed enough. Maybe you have federal law when you needed California law, um, you know, or, or so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I think this is another thing too that um, a lot of people struggle with, right? They think, wow, hey, I'm really busy today. Um, you know, I'm going to this report that Dina asked me for, I'm just going to you know, submit a query and see if they can do it for me because it looks so good. Right. Um, no, we're not going to do that. And if you, anytime you are sourcing information, you know, best practice is that you are clearly communicating, Hey, you know what? You asked me to get some background info, just so you know, this came from AI. Here's what I was able to pull, you know, and then have somebody else review all of that research it, double check, triple check. Hey, this is what we've got. Well, yeah, this looks good. This is a good foundation or no, this isn't necessarily um, what it is that we were looking for. And here's why, uh, but just, you know, um, submitting these queries, getting the information and then passing it off as, you know, work that you performed obviously is a, you know, recipe for disaster for, you know, a multitude of reasons. 
Um, the data security, you know, uh, again, we need to make, make sure that um, you are not giving more than you need to give, right? You need to be thorough and you need to be detailed when asking, um, but there's a way to do that without giving or submitting any type of personal um, information regarding, you know, employees, regarding yourself, regarding your company. Okay. Um, and then to summarize before I, I uh, let Dina jump in to conclude our webinar, um, AI should be used to complement, right? It's not a replacement. It's not going to be your HR. Hey, Brett, we don't need your help anymore. We're just going to start Googling everything or using AI. No, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, but it will help you, right? Um, create a better framework, especially when you are tackling some of these projects. You know, I'm st I need to recruit a salesperson in Southern California. What do I need to know? Perfect, right? Then you, it will give you four or five bullets on things that you need to think about. And then you can sit down with, with your colleagues, with fellow managers, with owners and say, hey, before we get going here and we figure out how to, you know, get this job posting before I call SDP for help with everything, here's what it's saying. It's saying that, you know, these are the four issues you know, with hiring sales reps in California, here's what we need to be aware of. Do we need to make any changes to our plan? You know, do we need to increase our salary? Do we need to offer a better, you know, commission plan? You know, do we need to talk to, to Brett and team about any of these things before we actually go live and we post this, this job, right? But AI is not going to um, create the posting for you. That would be a mistake. All right. Um, how can we help? Right. Um, we will. We there are there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things that we that we can do. Um, the support that we offer is not just geared towards, you know, one shape and size of business. Right. We have four different levels of service. Um, something for everyone. Whether you only have one employee whether you have 300 employees, we can figure out how to be able to support you so that you know we're plugging any holes that may exist um, currently you know on your team. You know, and then and it's just go you know you start off with with, with, an, with an audit, spend some time together um, and just asking questions to figure out how we might be able to help you. Um, but that's, I think, where we do our best work is asking those questions. Okay, talk to me about all of the the um, the things that you have on your plate. Um, what is it that you enjoy doing? Right? Are you good at? Well, I'm. I'm I love recruiting. I love doing that. I love meeting with people. I love interviewing. Um, okay, great. Well, that's that's awesome. We can help you and and draft um, the particular documents that you need so that you're not making a mistake. But other than that, then we'll just kind of sit in the background um, and, and just help answer any questions that you might have, right? Um, there's no need for us to come in and, and kind of step on toes, but just be more of a resource. Figure out how to um, give you that second level of help that you might need in certain areas. Um, yeah, you know, risk exposure, um, reducing costs, it's always more cost effective to get it done right the first time and to proactively sniff out any of these issues. I tell people all the time, you know, people don't listen. They don't, you know, a lot of the mistakes that, oh, Brett, you know, oh my goodness, you know, I just, I got this, I, I screwed up. I'm like, man, we talked about this, right? We talked about this six months ago. Yeah, but I thought I had it everything under control and, you know, like, yeah, you know, you, you, you don't, you know, you're a small business and you're focused on, you know, sales and marketing and hiring people and you know, growing your company. There are so many things that happen on the back end. Let us keep an eye on that stuff for you so that you can focus on what it is that you do best um, and, you know, growing your company. And we'll worry about the non-revenue producing, you know, red tape of all these laws and all these regulations that continue to change. And we'll just, we'll help you understand and, and just tap you on the shoulder. Hey guys, just keep it, you know, just so you know, this is a change. Here's what we have to do now moving forward. And we'll, we'll manage it all for you so you don't have to worry about it.
uh, third Tuesday of every month, 10 o'clock. So mark your calendar. Next month, we'll talk about um, texting with employees, you know, some, some best practices. Um, in August, we'll be covering uh, how to recruit and retain the best people. You'll get the official invites with the links from us um, you know, in the next few weeks or so. But for the rest of this year, we are committed Thursday, Tuesday of the month, 10 a.m., Brett and Dina. The Brett and Dina show will be back again in, on July 16th uh, and always uh, trying to bring the most relevant topics. So if there's anything that, you know, you might want to know about, reach out, let me know, send me an email, you know, um, uh, call us and say, hey, Brett, you know what, I've heard some, I've heard this, I've heard about that, you know, can you put together some content and can we talk about these other issues, you know, that, you know, because if it's, if it's on your plate, it's probably on somebody else's plate. Um, so, you know, I, I would love to do that. I'd love to be able to go and, and put together, um, you know, different content to be able to help you uh, navigate issues that, that might be in front of you. Um, and then lastly, uh, you'll see on our website, we have the a new section, um, a new series that we call Webinets. So just smaller, right? Instead of spending 45 minutes with Brett, um, you can spend 10 to 15 minutes and just get some of these overviews on, on certain topics. Um, you'll see there in July, we're gonna be talking about um, earned wage access, right? For those employees that um, are having financial difficulty, they might have like a one-off need. Uh, anybody that traditionally would come to you and ask for a cash advance, a loan, anybody that you might have on your roster that would be you know borrowing from their 401k, which is a, a not a very good business practice, um, you know, there are um, earned wa there's a, a wages on demand, um, you know, workforce management, what type of technologies can we help you implement to make life easier? Um, timekeeping, right? Wage and hour issues are by far number one in California, uh, the most popular lawsuit for plaintiff's attorneys, wage and hour, right? Meal periods, rest periods, overtime, double time. How can we help you? Uh, put yourself in a better position so that you don't have to worry about that. And um, STP Mobile, there's a lot of a lot of cool things that are, um, you know, coming down uh, the road here, especially in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, so you'll see those webs, those little webinets on our website. Um, so with that, I wanted to be respectful of everyone's time. Please uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks again for uh, joining us. And I will see you again uh, in a few weeks for July.